In this video, we are going to understand about the definite integral properties and then we will solve some example. Okay, let's see this four property of definite integrals. The first property is integral a to b f of x dx is equal to minus integral b to a f of x dx. So now you can see the interesting point. The lower limit is now the upper limit whereas the upper limit has became the lower limit. This is the first property and the second property is splitting in the intervals. Now this is valid for a piecewise function. Suppose you have integral a to c f of x dx. This can be splitted in the intervals integral a to b f of x dx plus integral b to c f of x dx. So this is the second property. Let's see the third property and this is very important because its application is difficult and we will understand that by solving some example so that your idea is clear how to solve the question using this third property. Integral a to b f of x upon f of x plus f of a plus b minus x. Now this is uh, the upper limit plus lower limit minus x. Okay. If this is the format, if this is the case, then the answer is b minus a by 2. Very important property. Please make a uh, special note of this. Okay. And the last property is if you have integral 0 to a f of x dx, then it can be written as integral 0 to a f of a minus x dx. Again, the most powerful property and I will show you its application. Very important property. Now this last property is the even odd property. It's basically the concept. The concept suggests that if you have integral minus a to a f of x dx, then you can say it's two times integral 0 to a f of x dx if the function is even. Now when the function is even, when f of x is equal to f of minus x, you have to check this. Always you have to check how you can check first f of x is given in the question. Second, you have to substitute x is equal to minus x in the above function and you have to check whether f of x is equal to f of minus x. If it is true, then you can say your function is even. If it is f of x is equal to minus time f of minus x, then it is odd function and the value of this integral is zero. Let's see some examples so that your idea is clear how to use this property. Integral minus 1 to 1 x squared dx. First you have minus a to a then you can think of this concept e1 odd function. Now the next task is f of x is x square. If I replace x with minus x I will get f of minus x. Now f of minus x is again minus x the whole square which is x square. You can say f of x is equal to f of minus x. That's why it is e1 function and for e1 function what is the case? Your integral is changed to 2 times integral 0 to a f of x dx. Now you can say your integral is 2 times 0 to a but here a is 1. So integral of 0 to 1 x square dx. After solving this integration you will get x cube by 3. Because it is a definite integral you will get the constant values every time. And as you can see in the indefinite integral this was the final answer 2 times x cube by 3 is the final answer for indefinite integral. But because you have this lower limit and upper limit as you can see here you have to substitute this. How you can substitute first you have to place the upper limit. So the answer for this is 2 times upper limit is 1. So 1 cube by 3 minus the lower limit. Lower limit is what 0. So 0 cube by 3. So now you can say your answer is what 2 by 3. This is the correct answer. Okay, let's see the second example. Now this example is integral minus 1 to 1 x cube dx. How to solve this? First you have noted you have integral minus a to a. So always when you see minus a to a always think of this property this example. Okay. So how to solve it further? You have integral minus a to a f of x dx. You have to find whether it is even or odd function. Then only you can conclude the answer. Okay. I am saying that my f of x is equal to x cube because here the function is x cube. Now I will find f of minus x. So x is equal to minus x you have to substitute and you will get minus x the whole power 3. So minus x the whole power 3 is minus x cubed. So f of x is equal to minus time f of minus x correct f of x which is x cubed is equal to minus time f of minus x correct. This means your answer is your function is what odd. So what's your answer integral of whatever you have but if it is odd the answer is 0. So correct answer of the integral is 0. I hope you got the property. Now let's see some example. This is example 1 integral 0 to 1 x sin inverse x upon root of 1 minus x square dx. How to solve this question? First you can note that you have the definite integral. So you can think of the property. Second if you cannot apply the property what to do? You have to first do the substitution because you have learned the three techniques. 
one is the substitution second is multiply divide with the conjugate and third is manipulate the numerator okay so this three technique you have learned so try all this three which one fits is the correct technique so here substitution fits correctly like sine inverse x is t so i can say that sine t is equal to x taking derivative on both sides so cos t dt is equal to dx so dx is now changed in terms of cos t dt what about the limits you have to change the limits because it's indefinite integral or definite it's definite integral so limit will affect how the limit will affect if x is 0 here you can see that if x is 0 then sine inverse of 0 is what 0 so t is 0 if x is 1 then you have to write it clearly if x is 1 then sine pi by 2 sine inverse sine pi by 2 sine inverse sine get cancelled so t is equal to pi by 2 so when x is 1 t is pi by 2 now you have the limits now you have the substitution part it's it's time to solve the integral so i is equal to integral 0 to pi by 2 you have changed the limits and instead of x you are writing sine of t correct instead of sine inverse x you are writing t in the denominator you have root of 1 minus x square which is changed to root of 1 minus sine square t and dx is changed to cos t dt now you can see that this term is equal to cos t cos t cos t get cancelled so basically it's integral 0 to pi by 2 sine t t dt now this is the uv rule okay so which one to consider you either this or this so according to the i late first is inverse then it's log then it's algebraic so algebraic is t so t is equal to u whereas sine t is equal to v so u into integral v minus integral of derivative of u into integral of v dt so this is the answer of uv rule as you can see integral of sine t is what minus cos t and derivative of uh, t is 1 now again solving this integral minus cos t will lead you to sin t this minus this minus is converted into plus and I am writing this as my final answer but this is correct for indefinite integrals. We are dealing with the definite integrals so we have to substitute the limits. Upper limit is pi by 2 lower limit is 0 upper limit minus lower limit after substituting you will get 1 plus 0 so the answer is 1. I hope you got this solution. Let's see the final example, example 2. This example is integral 0 to 1 root of 1 minus x upon 1 plus x. So how to solve this question? Whether go for substitution or manipulate the numerator, how to solve this question? Give me a hint. So basically you have studied the three techniques. Again I will repeat. One is the multiply divide with the conjugate. Second is the substitution and third is the manipulate the numerator. Here I, I can think of uh, multiply divide with conjugate because I want to get rid of this root. So integral 0 to 1 root of 1 minus x upon 1 plus x. If I multiply divide with the conjugate I will get this. Now what's next? 1 minus x into 1 minus x. This is 1 minus x the whole square. And the whole square part plus you have root. So root and square get cancelled. Numerator is 1 minus x. But denominator a plus b into a minus b. So this is a square minus b square but you will have the root in the denominator so root of a square minus b square as you can see here now what what to do next you have this integral 0 to 1 1 minus x upon root of 1 minus x square you can split the terms correct one one term is this integral 0 to 1 dx upon root of 1 minus x square and the second term is this minus integral 0 to 1 x dx upon root of 1 minus x square now this case is similar to f of x upon f of x whereas you have the function in the denominator okay and the uh, derivative in the numerator but this is the root type function and you have seen this in the previous videos of mine if you have integral f dash of x upon root of f of x the answer is what 2 times root f of x so you have to apply this uh, technique in this video in this question okay so integral 0 to 1 x dx upon root of 1 minus x square but the derivative of this function is minus 2x in the numerator you have x so I'm multiplying minus 2 and dividing minus 2 to make sure I have f dash of x upon root f of x now the answer for this is what answer for this is 2 times root f of x and because you had this thing minus minus got plus and plus 1 by 2 and further you can say this plus 1 by 2 and the answer is 2 times root f of x but because this is definite integral you have to make sure that you put the upper limit and the lower limit and get the constant answer. 
So integral of uh, dx upon root of 1 minus x square, this is the famous integral which is sin inverse x. So again upper limit minus lower limit sin inverse 1 minus sin inverse 0, it is equal to pi by 2 and if we talk here, what is that? 2 into root of 1 minus 1, so 0 and minus times you have 1, okay? So sin inverse 1 minus 1, so finally you can say that the answer is pi by 2 minus 1. So I hope you find this video interesting and useful. Meet you in the next video with some more interesting examples. So friends, if you like my video, then do like this video, share with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So we'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care. This is Shrenik Jain. Peace out.